and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that you know, that you know, that you know that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I say happy day, happy day, happy day when he came by my way and saved my soul. And we are so glad that you are here this morning with us at Big Level Baptist Church. Members and visitors alike, we welcome you all here today. And if you need uh, facilities throughout the service, if you need restrooms, you go through the doorway here. Go down the end of the hallway and take a left, and they'll be on your right. If you need the nursery for one of the little ones, you go through the same doorway, down the same hallway. Don't take a left, take a right. And before you get to the double doors, it'll be on your right. And you use those as need be today. And again, it is so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Uh, make plans to come back tonight. Got choir <laughs> practice at 5 o'clock, and then we'll have evening worship service. Uh, following evening service tonight, uh, we'll have business conference, and we're going to be voting on our proposed officers and teachers and also our proposed new budget. And so um, if you have not grabbed one of those, please grab one before you leave today, and we'll vote on that this evening. All right, Saturday, September the 16th, our senior adults are going to be going to the Billy Graham Library in Charlotte, North Carolina. They're going to be leaving the church at 9 o'clock. So all you senior adults, you don't want to miss this trip. Um, so you plan to be a part of that. Um, let Brother Brian Jackson, Miss Judy Jackson, and Miss Janice Harris know that you're planning to go on that, and I know that you'll be blessed for it. On Sunday, September the 17th, that will be next Sunday, we'll have regular worship service during the morning time here at the church. But then in the afternoon and evening we're going to move our services over to Harmon Field in Tryon and uh, we're going to have a time of river baptism and have a wonderful time of food and fellowship. We're going to bump up the time just a little bit. Okay, So we'll meet over there at Harmon Field at 4 o'clock and uh, we'll meet there in the cabin. We'll have a time of worship, sing, sing a couple hymns. Then we'll go down to the river about 4.30 and uh, we'll have baptism there and then we'll come back up to the cabin and we'll have a time of food and fellowship. The church is going going to provide the pizza, everybody else bring the size desserts and drinks, and we'll have a wonderful time together. Then let the kids play on the playground and uh, bring the gloves and the balls and the bats. We'll get out on the ball field, throw the ball around, just have a wonderful time of fellowship together, and we pray that you're making plans to be with us. You don't want to miss it. I praise the Lord. We got three to baptize in the river. Somebody say amen, and uh, we got room for more. No telling what God's going to do before next Sunday, so we praise the Lord for that. Saturday, September the 23rd, uh, the women's group's going to be hosting their third annual barbecue dinner and silent auction. It starts at 4 o'clock um, here at the church, and tickets are on sale now. Adult plates are $10, and children 10 and under are $5, and uh, all proceeds go towards the shipping of the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. They're accepting items now for the auction, and uh, we appreciate everybody's support with that. And with that being said, on Sunday, September the 24th, we'll have a special guest and his family here with us. It's going to be Brother Jamie Murphy, and uh, Brother Jamie's going to be the one that's going to be uh, doing the barbecue for us for the for the fundraiser. And if you've never had his barbecue, I'm telling you, you're missing out. He, he does a wonderful, wonderful job, but he and his family will be with us um, during the morning service, so I know that you're going to get a blessing there. All right, let's, uh, let's look to October, all right? Uh, Sunday, October 8th, Family and Friends Day here at Big Level. Now, church, you did a fantastic job last year for Family and Friends Day. We had over 150 people um, here in the sanctuary and had a wonderful time of worship and fellowship that day, and I believe in challenge challenging God's people. So here's what I want to challenge to you. I want over 200 people in this place. I want the choir to have to stay up there. I don't want them to be able to come down. I want it to be so full in here with your family and friends, your lost loved ones, the people that you know that don't have a church home. I want you to get busy. All right, inviting people and hey, make sure they nail it down that they're going to come to church with you on Sunday, October the 8th. And go ahead and tell them, okay? Hey, if you feed them, they'll come. Go ahead and tell them. We're going to feed them following the service. Church is going to provide the fried chicken. Everybody else bring the size desserts and the drinks, and we'll have a wonderful time of fellowship. And we're going to have such a good time of fellowship together that we're not going to have evening service. So you can rest uh, there in the evening and get ready for the week. 
opportunities for you to give. The month of September, our ministry of the month is the North Carolina Missions Offering. Giving to this offering, you are being a part of a lot of mission work that goes on here in the state of North Carolina. There are churches that are going through revitalization projects. There are new church plants in North Carolina. You are giving to the Disaster Relief Fund for those folks that when tragedy strikes in our state, okay, it happened just a few years ago um, here when they had the mudslides up in the valley, okay, they, we actually housed them at Midway Baptist Church. Uh, North Carolina Baptist Relief came and they set up shop at Midway Baptist here in Polk County and they went up there and helped just in a mighty way with those folks. So I encourage you, just be prayerful as you give, and I just wanted to let you know um, what your money was going to. So you be prayerful as you give to the North Carolina Missions Offering. Also, a renovation project here at the church, you can give to that. And for Operation Christmas Child for the month of September, they ask that you bring notebook paper and toothbrushes, and we appreciate everybody giving uh, throughout the year to that. Uh, one thing I do want to mention to you today, we're going to do a special special love offering here in the upcoming weeks. We're going to give you two opportunities to give. Uh, Miss Anna Nealon came to me, and she said, Preacher, she said, uh, we as the nurses um, for Polk County Schools, and so that's just not Polk Central, that's Sunnyview, Saluda, Trump, on and others those those nurses have to provide uh, different snacks and drinks and different things for kids that come and see them throughout the day and they they take care of that out of their out of their own pocket and I thought well why can't we be the hands and feet of Jesus and help help these nurses provide this for these kids I'm all about helping some kids aren't you and uh, and so give you opportunity to give we'll start next week and the week after give you opportunity to give to that every penny that you give to that special love offering Miss Anna and these nurses are going to provide snacks and drinks and other things for these kids that so desperately need it when they come to their office. Brother Randy McGuinn said the other day, he said, man, if I knew I got a snack and a drink when I went to the nurse's office, I think I'd win all the time. <laughs> but we don't know what they need, but I sure am all about loving on some kids. So <laughs> that's right. So, Miss Debbie, she did it for years. She's done it for years. She says sometimes that's all they get to eat. So, hey, man, hey, man, I'm going to take care of some kids, right? And uh, so you just be prayerful as you give. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. We don't want to go to church without him this morning, amen? Uh, I already feel him in this place. I, I don't know about you. And uh, I come expecting God to work uh, in a mighty way today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Gary Haynes, you pray for us this morning, brother. Baptist hymnal, page 213, page 213 in the Baptist, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Let's stand as we give him praise all over this building.
Page 430 in the Baptist, the old church hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. Amen. Give him praise and thanks.
leave your seats and go all over the building. Shake hands, make our visitors welcome. While the ladies play. You know, I've thought about, ever since I've got saved, I've had a burden for people, other people to get saved. And I know in the crowd this side, there's somebody here that's not saved. Oh. And you probably ain't feeling nothing. Like, why are they acting like they are? <laughs> Golly, ain't nothing like it. Right, nothing right. on this earth can make you feel like Jesus can, right. like that's Lord right. can. And if you're going through things, I don't see how people go through stuff in life without the Lord. That's right. I really don't. You know, I, there's an old saying, people say, the Lord don't put more on you than you can handle with him. Yeah. By yourself, you, you've got more than you can handle. But right. with the Lord, right. you can handle anything. Yeah. And I just beg, if you're here today and you don't know him, you don't you don't feel nothing, I pray that you'll come to this altar. Yeah. And get on what we're feeling here, Lord. Like I said, there ain't nothing like it. 
and just realize where you're going without him. If you take your last breath, you're going to bust hell wide open uh, for eternity. Not just for a little while of torture, for eternity. All God's people say it. Amen. I sure am glad for the day that a preacher got up and he told me exactly where I was headed. But he didn't leave me there. He told me I didn't have to go. <laughs> he told me somebody made a way <laughs> so that I didn't have to go to that awful place. And his name is Jesus. Well, we want to start a new sermon series this morning. I, I normally uh, don't do as many sermon series on Sunday mornings, but the Lord has led me in this direction, and we're going to start a sermon series this morning entitled, When He Visits. Uh, when He Visits. And we're going to start this morning in Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. And we're going to read the first five verses of the chapter and dive into the thought that I believe God would have for us for today. Genesis chapter 21. Verses 1 through 5 this morning. 
love hearing those Bible pages turn. Genesis 21, verses 1 through 5, if you found your place and willing and able, would you stand reverence of the reading of the Word of God? The Bible says this in Genesis chapter 21, beginning in verse 1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity. Lord, to come to your house and to worship you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. God, I want to say thank you for passing by our way, for coming by and visiting with us today and manifesting yourself in this place. And God, may we never take that for granted. God, we thank you for the prayers that have been prayed, the songs that have been sung, testimonies that have been given. We say thank you for your pure, holy, infallible word. Fathers, we look to this text today. I stand behind this sacred desk. I stand where my flesh fails me. I cannot preach in and of myself. So God, I pray that you would preach today. God, hide me behind the cross and use me as a vessel. And God, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice would see all of you and none of me. And we'll give you praise and glory for it all. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated. With the sermon series title, When He Visits, I decided to look up the definition of the word visit. It is simply this, to go and see and spend time with someone. To go and see and spend time with someone. I want you to note this today, that the visitor comes to see the visitee. The visitor comes to see the visitee. Now, visitors come with a purpose. Uh, Maybe you are in this place this morning and you would be deemed a visitor of Big Level Baptist Church. You came here with a purpose today. You said, maybe I'm looking for a church home and I've heard what God's doing down there at Big Level, or maybe I've got family and friends that are going to Big Level, and I just want to go see about Big Level Baptist Church to see if I would like to make it the church home for me and my family. Why visitors come to our homes, and they come with a purpose, to spend time with us, to fellowship with us, to commune with us, and to make memories and build relationships. What about me as a pastor? When I go on pastoral visits, I go to nursing homes, I go to hospitals, I go to people's homes, I go by and spend time with folks to check in on folks, to love on folks, and to try to be a blessing and try to be a help with folks. And our deacons and all of our church folks, they do the same thing. They go by and they visit with people to try to be a blessing and to try to be a help. Uh, There are times when folks see my truck here in the parking lot and I'll be out here working at the church and why there'll be a knock at at the door and uh, somebody has come by just to say hello and just to visit with me and they normally say this, Preacher, I was just driving by, I noticed your truck, just wanted to stop in, just see what you was up to and see how you were doing. Stop by for a visit. I want to say this, the visitee may not know when the visitor is coming. You ever heard somebody say this phrase, just come by any time? Just come by any time. What that means is, come by any time. Any time you want. If you want to come in the morning, come on in the morning. If you want to come by in the evening, if you're just passing by, just stop on by and say hello. Come on by any time. My wife and I, that is something that as we are looking at our kids and, and they're growing up so very fast, we know we're going to turn around three times and they're going to be grown and having families of their own. And we tell them, we're already setting the standard that when y'all get older, mom and daddy's door is always unlocked and it's always open. Y'all ain't got to call. You don't have to text. You just come on by. You can always come by and spend time with us. But what about the capital V visitor this morning? Uh, I want to say this. 
The capital V visitor is none other than the Lord God himself. And I'm glad to report today that he can come by and visit because he's alive and he's able to do so. Don't expect Baal or Muhammad or Allah or Joseph Smith or Buddha to come by and visit with you. They're not going to because they're dried up and dead. No substance to them at all. They can't do it. But I'm thankful our God is able to come by and visit because he's alive and able to do so. <laughs> he comes by and visits with us. He is the visitor and we are the visitees. <laughs> he comes by and manifests himself in our presence. And I just want to say this morning, I'm not worthy to be in his presence. I'm not worthy of a visit from the capital V visitor. But I sure am glad that he loves me so much that he decides to come by and just spend time with me and work in my life. And our relationship grows daily because, hey, I'm unworthy to come to him, but he comes down to me. <laughs> I want to say this. I've been to places where he really doesn't visit. I've been in some dried up dead churches in my time. I've been asked to preach in some dried up dead churches where I'd preach my guts out and get done and leave and I'd do my part. But I mean it felt like the Arctic in that place. No presence of God. No fellowship among the believers. Nobody's hands raised to just send a word of praise to the God above. Nobody gave a testimony. Seemed like nobody even had a tear trickle down their cheek because they were moved with the Holy Ghost. I mean, they just sit there like a bunch of stone face statues and like, hurry up, preacher, and get done. I'm ready to go to the house. I've been there, but I want to say this. I've been to some pretty warm places. And hey, I've been to some places and I'm thankful that I pastor one of them right here where God comes by and He visits and He manifests Himself and He does things in our midst that only He can do. He always comes with a purpose. He comes with a purpose every time. And I put this in my notes, this will help you. <laughs> when He visits and the visit's over, you'll know who you've been with. I've never had God blow through a place and people stand out on the patio and say, I wonder if God showed up today. I wonder why all this happened. I wonder why people were shouting. I wonder why people were giving testimonies to God. I wonder why people were so happy. I've never had him ask that question because when he passes by and he visits, you know exactly who's been here. <laughs> you don't have to ask any questions and he doesn't have to wear a name tag. You know exactly who's been here by the work and the feeling of his presence. <laughs> but before we get to this visit here in chapter 21, let me bring you up to speed. If you go back to Genesis 11, you're going to find a lot of genealogy and a lot of those so-and-so begat so-and-so. But you will find a name pinned down in Genesis chapter 11 by the name of Abram. And in Genesis chapter 12, you find that the Lord is going to come to Abram and He's going to tell him to do something. He says, get thee out of thy country and go into a land that I'm going to show you. Meaning this, I'm calling you to action. I'm calling you to step out in faith. I'm calling you to go and to do something and go to a place that I have not shown you yet. Now for many Baptists, they would have just sat right there and not done a thing. But I sure am thankful that Abram decided to get up and to go and he stepped out in faith. And God told him, he said, I will make thee a great nation. He said, I'll bless them that bless thee. I'll curse them that curse thee. In Genesis chapter 15, Abram is having a conversation with God and he lets God know this. I know that you promised these things, but I go childless. I do not have an heir. A male son was a big deal in Bible time. It's still a big deal today in our generation. 
Can I use my wife's family as an illustration? Her father's last name was Clark and he had three daughters. And so when he passed away, the Clark last name passed away. That name does not carry on into more generations. She wanted a girl the first two times. And I was happy to have boys because I wanted that McKegg name to carry on to another generation. And praise the Lord, he sent us our little girl with the third one and we said we were done. <laughs> but that's what Abram's saying. He says, I need an heir. I don't have a child. How can I be this great nation? How am I going to do all these things? Because when I die, it stops. Because I don't have a son. I don't have an heir. What's going to be done about that? God says, I want you to look up at the stars. He says, I want you to see if you can number them if you can. And he promises this, so shall thy seed be. God says, I'm going to take care of it. There's going to be one coming. A seed has been promised. You're going to have an heir. Now like many of us, Abram, his wife Sarah, they get fleshly. They try to take the ball out of God's hands and put it in their hands. Genesis chapter 16, we find Ishmael being born of Hagar, the Egyptian handmaid, trying to take care of something, trying to fix something, not the way that God had intended. Ishmael would be promised that he'd be a wild man. Ishmael was no Isaac. God had promised Isaac. Isaac was the one that was to be born and to be the heir. In Genesis 17, at 99 years old, we find the name change from Abram to Abraham. What does Abraham mean? Father of many nations. Again, reiterating the promise of a son. It is in Genesis 17 that you find that God would tell him, you're going to have a son and his name shall be called Isaac. Abram's going to be 100 years old and his wife Sarah's going to be 90. <laughs> and let's see what the Lord does. Let's look to our text today, verse 1 of chapter 21. Here's what the Bible says. And the Lord visited Sarah. Sarah didn't visit the Lord. The Lord came by and he visited Sarah. And what did he do? He visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. I came to remind somebody today, our God is a promise-keeping God. He's never lied. He's never failed. He's never broken a promise. And because of that, we can take him at his word today because he is a promise-keeping God. God. <laughs> he reminds them of this in this visit because he's going to do as he had said and do as he had spoken. In verse 2, the beginning part of the verse, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. Now listen. God's power is on display right here in these verses because if you want to take time off of work tomorrow go sit at a hospital that has a labor and delivery unit and I want you to count how many 90 year old women go in there prepared to give birth to a child you may see some 90 year old ladies go in there but they're going to have a big old smile on their face and may have a gift there in their arm because they've just been made a grandma or a great grandma again. That's why they're coming by to visit. They're not coming by to participate. They're coming by to visit. That does not happen in our day and time. If I could have grabbed some biologists and put them up here on the stage today and asked them, do you think this is possible? Does this make sense? All of them would say, no, it does not make sense. It does not make sense. 
Things do not work in that fashion anymore. That does not make sense. But what if you were to have a seat on the bench outside labor and delivery and you did see a 90-year-old woman coming in there and she didn't have a smile on her face but rather she looked like she was in some pain. And she looks like she's ready to give birth to a child and you were to ask her, ma'am, I got to ask you, how in the world did this happen? What would be your response when she looked at you and that pain on her face removed and she got a little bit of a smile on her face and she said, God did it. God did it. You see, our God specializes in working in the impossible. When it doesn't make sense to the doctors, when it doesn't make sense to the specialist, when it doesn't make sense to the psychiatrist, when it doesn't make sense to the politician, when it doesn't make sense even to the preacher and the deacons, God can make a way. He specializes in making a way when there is no way. Some of you in here, that was labeled of you. You were a lost cause. He said, just people said, let them go. The sheriff's department had given up on you. The psychiatrist had given up on you. The drug and the alcohol rehab centers had given up on you only for God to come by and to touch your life and to let you know your need of a Savior. And He birthed you into the family of God. And now look at you today. No more jail. No more rehab. No more alcohol. No more drugs. Sitting here with a Bible in your lap. Singing the songs of Zion. I say this. He still specializes in working in the impossible. He's displayed his power as a redeemer. Can anybody testify that he's displayed his power as a healer today? Hey, the doctors had said there's no hope. The doctors have said this is what's going to have to happen. Only for God to take something away. Only for God to touch your body. Only for a doctor to put up one scan over here and take a new one and put it over there. And the one taken a little while ago had a mass or some issue in it. Only for the new one to be put up. And that doctor sit there and scratch his head and say, I can't understand. Understand it. I can't explain it. But the mass is gone. But the issue is gone. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching today. Hey, it's all gone. And you get to tell them medicine didn't take it. Chemo didn't take it. Surgery didn't take it. But God reached down and he's still a healer today. You know what somebody needs to hear in this place? He's going to, he's displaying here in this passage. He's still a friend. He's still a friend. Some of y'all came in here today and the things that are going on in your life you think nobody cares about. You think nobody knows. You think nobody, nobody will ever understand what's going on in the circumstances of your life. You are broken and you are hurting. Only for God to bring you to Big Level Baptist Church and to let this 35-year-old preacher tell you today he has not forgotten about you. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you're going through. You just keep holding on. You just keep clinging to him. Everything's going to be all right. He has not forsaken you today. Shoo, that's my favorite promise in all the Bible. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I don't know about you, friend, but I cling to that all the time. When the devil tells me, nobody cares. When the devil tells me that you don't want to see tomorrow. When the devil tells me you'll never see the light at the end of the tunnel. Only for God to come by and to wrap me up in his arms of love and mercy and grace. And I say, I can preach another sermon. I can go another mile. Only by him. Whew, glory to his name. Notice this today. Y'all preaching me to death, but I'm loving every bit of it. Listen to me. Let's look at the end of verse 2. Listen to me. Nothing in your Bible is there by accident. Listen to me. Nothing in your Bible is there by accident. 
Notice what it says. The end part of verse 2. At the set time of which God had spoken to him. Listen to me, friend. If we come in here today and we trust that everything about God is perfect, holy, and true, can we get an amen on that? All right. So we're together. Everything about God is pure, holy, and true. He has no error in Him. He has no mistake in Him. Then if we say that and we cling to that today, now we also have to trust His timing. That's some of the toughest things that we have to do as Christians. When God's calendar doesn't line up to our Google calendar. When things in our life are pressing and it seems like things have to happen at this very moment or trouble's going to come or circumstances are going to fall upon our life only for God to say, it may not line up in your time, but it's going to line up in mine. Everything's going to work out at my appointed time. I came to remind you this morning, Isaac was not an accident. He was a promise. Can I tell you today, friend, you being at Big Level Baptist Church on September the 10th at 11 o'clock in the morning was not an accident. God brought you here for a purpose today. Some of you, I tell you exactly what you need. You need salvation full and free. You need to be pardoned today. That's what you need. You've never given your life to Jesus and you're not here by accident. God brought you here for a purpose because the Holy Ghost was going to get on you before you ever went through the church doors when you pulled in the parking lot and He's been dealing with you ever since you've been here and you're ready for me to us and get to the invitation so you can come get saved. That's what you need. You need salvation today. You know what some of you need today? You're not here by accident. You just need to come up here and say, God, I just want to thank you. For your healing touch, (laughs) for reviving my soul, for doing the things in my life that when it seemed impossible, you made a way in my life. I don't know what he's done in your life, but you do. When's the last time you bowed your unworthy head here at the old-fashioned altar and said, thank you. Thank you for working in my life. When there was no way, you made a way. When my bank account didn't line up with my bills, you made a way. When the cupboard didn't line up with what I was supposed to put on the table, you made a way. When everything in my life seemed to be falling apart, you made a way. When was the last time you said thank you for that? Or have you just been going about your everyday life taking it for granted? That he moved so mighty and it's worked in the impossible in your life. God's timing proves His power and His might. And to sum it all up today, I want to encourage somebody with this. Don't give up. Don't give up. Some of you have been praying for your kids and your grandkids for years to come to faith in Christ. And maybe the devil's kicked you in the shins this week and told you, ain't no use praying for them. Ain't no reason to keep going to that church. Ain't no reason to keep praising Him. Ain't no reason to go and do all the things that you do that thrice holy God he hadn't come through on what you're praying for maybe God's just wrapped you up in his arms of love mercy and grace today and he's let you know my timing's perfect my timing's perfect let it come to pass when I say when I say some of you in here you, you got people on your heart and on your mind they're so out there in the world so messed up and so plagued with the things of this world that it seems like the more you pray for them, the worse it gets. The more you pray for them, the worse it gets. Can I tell you this today, friend? Don't quit praying. Don't stop loving on people. Keep praying. Because nothing, nothing is impossible with God. If a hundred-year-old man and a ninety-year-old woman can conceive a child, he can do the things in your life too. Because he's still the same today. My Bible tells me in the Old Testament, for I am the Lord, I change not. And he says in Hebrews, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you want to go to either side, you can. He's still the same. He's still constant today. (laughs) I'm glad. Our circumstances may change. (laughs) Things may come up in our life that we didn't see coming. But he's constant. He's true. You can come cry out to a thrice holy God today with whatever's on your heart. 
whatever needs to be done today. If you need to come and give your life to Jesus, I'd love to pray with you and show you how to be saved. Hey, you need to come down here and just lay some burdens down. Hey, Jesus is here to welcome you with open arms today. Come and lay those burdens down. Maybe you just want to come down here and say thank you. I believe God's people ought to be the most thankful people. I'd agree with you on that. Come down here and tell him thank you today. Because, hey, when he visits, things are going to happen. <laughs> and I'm thankful that he's still visiting today. Miss Debbie, Miss Janice, would y'all come to the instruments today? Every head bowed, every eye closed across the place. This altar's open already. You don't have to wait for them to start to play. God's people's moving already. Hey, you don't have to wait for them to start. You can go ahead and come on. There's plenty of room at this altar today. What, what do you need today? What do you need today? I'm glad. I'm glad. He still visits. All God's people see it. Amen. Well, I pray you've done business with God today. And I pray you leave this place today saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm glad he came by and visited with us for a little while today. And I look forward to coming back and him coming by and visiting with us again this evening. So you make plans to come back and be with us tonight. Choir practice 5 o'clock. We'll have worship service at 6. We'll continue going through the Sermon on the Mount together. And uh, Brother Randy will have the teenagers. So you bring the youth group out and they'll have a wonderful time tonight. Then we'll have business conference to conclude our time together tonight. Uh, all hearts and minds clear today before we go. All right. Brother Michael Nealon, you close us in prayer, brother.